Hello, sweet creative friend. Namaste and welcome. Today I wanted to share some of my favorite yoga asanas to get into after a long day of writing. So as writers, we are seated at desks for long periods of time. There's a tendency to for the shoulder heads to roll over, to kind of hunch over. There can be a lot of spinal and posture issues that arise, lots of like tightness in the hips. So we're going to get into just some of my favorite postures to open the body up after sitting for in a static position for a long period of time. I also recommend sitting on the floor. I have a video about that, which is what I usually do, which invites some loving, fun movement into my day, even though I am still writing for many hours. But even after that, I like to take some time, usually about a half hour to an hour, to do some yoga. And I'll recommend some of my favorite yoga practitioners below. But for right now, I'm just gonna share some of the asanas I love to get into to open the body and reverse that tight, hunched over posture that we can often, without even noticing it, get into when we're writing. So, Grab a yoga mat if you have one, hop into something comfy, and let's get started. Okay, my friends, so let's start today lying down on our mat. So come to your back and just rest your shoulder blades against the floor. Let the tension come out of your shoulders, roll them back away from your ears, make sure they're not climbing up towards your ears. We can tend to hold a lot of tension in our shoulders, especially after we've been seated, seated all day at our desks writing or for several hours. Make sure your feet are planted just underneath your knees and that your knees are hip width apart. We're going to bring our hands down to our mat, pressing into the mat and lifting our hips, coming into bridge pose here. Nice and easy. This is going to be a quick practice. Nice wind down from a day of writing. So just relax into these poses. Make the most out of these few minutes together. Exhale, bring it back down one vertebrae at a time, coming back to the mat, letting the lower back press into the mat, pulling the navel to the spine. Inhale, lifting back into bridge, thinking about the navel is being pulled up toward the ceiling, the shoulder blades are rolling back. And exhale, lowering back down one vertebrae at a time, flattening the lower back to the mat once more. Let's do that one more time. Lifting up, inhale. Lifting the belly, the chest up toward the ceiling. If you want to, depending on where you are in your practice, you can interlace your fingers underneath here and allow your shoulder heads to roll open. So you're kind of coming a little bit more onto the tops of your shoulders here. Pressing the palms of your hands together as much as you are able to, interlacing the fingers, opening the chest. This is a very deep opening here. And when you're ready, exhale, press the hands back down, lower one vertebrae at a time. From here, we're going to bring our knees to our chest, pulling our legs to our torso, wrapping our arms around our legs, just giving ourselves a hug for a minute here. And if it feels good, bringing our chin toward our chest, forehead towards the knees. And just coming into a ball, you can rest your head down whenever it feels good. And you can even invite a little rock here this small movement, this small motion on our lower back actually helps to stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system, which signals our body that it's time to wind down, it's time to relax. So this can be a really nice thing to do before bed, especially if you have trouble sleeping. A lot of us in today's uh, digital world, when we're working on the computer all day, it can be hard to wind our minds down enough to get a restful night's sleep. So this might be something nice for you to try. If you have any trouble at all sleeping or getting relaxed enough to go to sleep, 
you can put your um, your the palms of your hands on your kneecaps and just sort of make a circle draw a circle with your the tops of your knees and that should feel really good on the spine you can reverse direction so you're making that circle in the opposite direction and then when you're ready bring your hands down to the bottoms of your feet and just open up your feet into happy baby. So this is a really famous yoga pose. Most of you probably know it. You're just opening your feet toward the ceiling. You're gently pulling, applying pressure to bring your knees down toward the floor. They do not need to touch the floor. Mine most certainly don't, but that's the intention and that's the energetic, um, that's the energy here. We're just pulling on the legs. This is a beautiful hip opener and this can feel incredible after we've been sitting in one position for long periods of time. We tend to store a lot of emotion, a lot of stress in our hips, so this can be great at the end of the day as a nice stress release to just come into happy baby. You can rock back and forth. Again, you're stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system too in, in these positions where you're massaging the lower back the lumbar spine, which for many of us, when we hunch, our lumbar spine can get so sore. So poses like this really help to counter that negative effect that it can have on our bodies. When you're ready, come back to that ball position, exhaling. And when you're ready, just come up to a seated position on your mat, pressing up into a seated position. Taking a nice deep breath in. We're going to roll forward onto our hands and knees here and reach our feet back into plank. And just pump it here for a minute, rocking back and forth on the balls of your feet before lowering into chaturanga. Upward facing dog and downward facing dog. Take a moment to just walk it out here Move any stiffness out of the body. The heels do not have to touch the floor. Just reach down as far as feels comfortable to you and just breathe here for a moment, either in stillness or moving. Just take two deep breaths here, inhaling deeply through the nose, filling the lungs and exhale. When you're ready, look forward. Reach your right leg up bending the knee and bringing your right knee toward your right thumb and just setting your leg down to come into our pigeon pose. You can fold your leg however feels good here. Just make sure your back leg is walked kind of along the middle of your mat so your hips are square, your shoulders are square. Maybe you stay here with your hands on the front of your mat feeling this deep stretch through the right hip and the, the glute, or maybe you walk it down, coming down to your forearms. This is all about finding what feels right to your body. You can also come down all the way if that feels good, if you feel that flexibility and opening, and just breathe. Breathing into that tension, I this is often one of the most intense poses for me because my hips are so tight from sitting all day. This really just gets into that hip and releases that tightness, that stagnation in the body. And if you find that, oh wow, this just feels great, I feel like I have so much tension here and it's being released. Feel free to pause the video and stay here as long as you need to. This is a wonderful pose to slowly get deeper and deeper into. And when you're ready, exhale, come back up. Press into the hands and swing that right foot back. Coming back into downward facing dog. Taking a breath here, switching it to the left side, reaching that left foot back, bringing your left knee toward your left thumb. Again, make sure your alignment is here. Your hips are square toward the front of your mat. Your shin is working towards parallel, toward the front of your mat, but it does not have to be. It needs to be wherever it feels good to you. 
Take a deep breath in and come down to whatever level feels right to you. Maybe you're staying on your fingertips. Maybe you're coming to your forearms. Or perhaps you're coming all the way down to rest your head on your mat. However this feels good to you, just take a few deep breaths here. Breathe into that left hip socket, that left hip joint. And just allow with each exhalation that tension to let go. Allowing the, the stress and the tension of the day to wash away on your exhalation. When you're ready, slowly come back up on your exhale. Inhale, look up to the sky. Exhale, press into your hands, swinging that leg back and coming back into downward facing dog. Take a nice deep inhalation here. And when you exhale, come down to your knees, tucking your toes under, straightening up for just a breath. And then coming all the way up to your knees, your knees are directly underneath your hips and your legs are about hip width apart. Starting with just opening your chest, opening your back, bringing your hands to your lower back and opening your heart to the sky. If this feels good to you, stop here. If you feel like challenging yourself, bringing your hands to your heels and opening into camel. Opening the chest, the heart to the sky pressing the hips forward, throwing the head back if it feels good. Take one more deep breath in. When you're ready to come out, bring one hand to the sacrum, the other, just resting your hands on your lower back, allowing your spine to neutralize before sitting slowly back onto your heels once more. Just allow the spine to straighten here and when you're ready, walk your hands forward into child's pose. Countering that deep back bend that we just settled into through that beautiful asana. And then when you're ready, look forward, press into your hands, curl your toes under and press back into downward facing dog. Inhale, look up towards the front of your mat, step or hop forward, halfway lift, resting your hands on your knees or your shins, Full forward fold on your exhale. Inhale, root to rise, look up, reach up to the sky, bring your hands down to your heart. Inhale, reach up, look up, look back if it feels good to you. And exhale, all the way to your mat. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, step back into plank position. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. On your next inhale, Look forward, bend your knees, and hop through to a seat. Coming back to your mat, lying down once more. To close off our practice, this small wind down from our writing day, we're going to take our one knee over the other. I'm doing my, uh, my right knee. Over my left, I'm walking my hips slightly to the right, and I'm letting my knees fall over to the left. Spreading your arms out to the sides and just gently keeping your shoulder blades pressed to the mat, glancing over your right shoulder. Allowing for that beautiful opening in the spine. This is our supine twist, and it's so lovely. <laughs> after desk work. Sometimes you'll feel quite a release in the spine while doing this pose. I'll often take a break while I'm still writing. I, I write at a low floor table. Sometimes I'll just lie back on the floor <laughs> and do this twist because it's so good for your spine. 
feels such a release. Inhale back to center, bring your knees to your chest and just switch it to the other side, walking your hips over to the left and letting them fall over to the right, glancing over your left shoulder. Just be super mindful that your shoulders are staying planted against the ground. Take a few nice deep breaths here. This twist is also so good for your internal organs, your digestive organs. Just take a few cleansing breaths here. And on your next inhalation, come back to center, curling your knees back to the chest, giving yourself a nice big hug. And when you're ready, let's roll over to our side, pressing slowly up to a seated position, coming back to the center of your mat for a moment to close off your practice. Taking a nice deep inhalation, exhale, letting it go, noticing the shift, how you feel now versus when you first started. Maybe you notice an energetic shift. Maybe you notice more of an openness in muscles that were tight before. This can be a wonderful practice to return to whenever you feel like you need a little something, but you don't have enough time to work out, but you want to move, add some movement to your daily practice after writing, after creating in a static position for a long period of time. It can be so healthy. Movement is medicine and it's so good for our bodies after a long writing day. When you're ready, take a nice deep inhale, looking up to the sky creating that funnel of creativity, funnel to the heavens, bringing your palms together at your forehead and lowering them down to your heart, bowing down to your own heart and thanking yourself, sending yourself compassion and gratitude for taking the time to look after yourself, mind, body, and spirit. I send you all my gratitude, my friend. Thank you for being here. Thank you for practicing with me and I hope to see you in the next video. I wish you so much joy in your journey. Namaste. I just wanted to take this moment, sweet friends, to say thank you so much for taking the time to practice with me. I deeply hope that this could serve you in a positive way, that you enjoyed this yoga practice and that it brought some positive benefit to your daily practice. I wanted to let you know that if you're interested in looking for meditations to tag onto your daily yoga practice or your post-writing yoga retreats, I have a meditation course that I designed specifically for creative writers to help them tap into their inner creator and land here and now in this present moment in order to activate that creative power within us. I designed this course specifically with writers in mind using all the meditation techniques and mantras that helped me so much in my own journey. It's a seven day journey and it's designed with you in mind, your creativity and alignment with your mind, body, and spirit. If you would like to check it out, if it sounds like something that would serve you in a positive way, you can find the link to that below. I look forward to expanding with you in this glorious and blissful journey. Thank you so much for being here. Be sure to subscribe, click like if you enjoyed this video because I would love to share my next practice with you and have you here in the community. Thank you so much. I send you all my gratitude and light. Namaste.